Hi guys, James here from Sunseeker Southampton down at our facilities in Poole on the south coast of the UK today and we're going to look around a 2004 Sunseeker Superhawk 40. Uh, she's just behind me here. This is Skyfall. I've uh, been in the UK since spring 2019. Previous uh, to that she was down in the Spanish uh, mainland and she's in uh, great shape. On the market currently at £105,000 tax paid. A motivated owner, actually uh, an ex Sunseeker International Executive. Uh, boat's been here with us in the yard now, just undergoing some works ready for the season. So she's anti fouled, engines have been serviced, and it's an ideal opportunity to get out on the water this summer in something you turn the key and get out and share some new adventures. Uh, so she's classic Sunseeker blue over white, so white gel coat hill underneath here and then the blue boot top stripe which is original gel coat and then the whole band here is actually a painted finish uh, which has been redone at some point in her previous history if we just have a low, slow walk around you'll see generally the condition is pretty good uh, pick up a couple of little blemishes over on the starboard side but this side itself is pretty good a little bit of flaking here on the uh, on the vents but that would be easy to clean off Hey, first impression she presents pretty good lots of shine in the gel coat still boats of this era very much everything was over engineered so they tolerate being polished back up saying she's um, she's a very pretty boat standing back easy to see why these were classic boats that often appeared in the likes of the James Bond films over the years we've got a little bit of chafing on the hull here from fenders a bit hard to see on the camera so once the boats in the water really quite hard to see that and I noticed a little bit there's a spider crack here around the um, around the vent really but there's nothing much you can do about that without lots of pain work so I would say use and enjoy the boat as she is now really doesn't let down the overall cosmetics of her it's all really about what goes on in the cockpit and the engine bay so uh, these are effectively a Sunseeker Superhawk 34 hull uh, which is modified here to take this extended bathing platform giving more space for uh, connection with the water, say for diving and, and carrying tenders and what have you. Uh, powered here by a pair of Volvo uh, DPH stern drives, so stainless steel prop propellers here. And then you can see on the back here, so we've got uh, Bennett hydraulic trim tabs. We've got a pair of underwater lights. You can see fresh bellows here on the drives, so they're all pretty, pretty much ready to go under here. Say in the hulls had a fresh coat of anti foul so now suitable to leave in the water for the rest of this season. Uh, we've got a stainless steel rubbing band runs around the bathing platform here which looks pretty good actually. A little bit of surface rust to take off but uh, no nasty dents and scrapes in that and the, uh, the white gel coat on the platform itself. A couple of little imperfections here. I picked up something in the middle here but again, really things that I wouldn't be uh, recommending to any buyer really to, to rush out and do. So very pretty boat, standard, uh, they weigh in just under 40 feet. So they're 39 foot two overall, narrow beam, deep V hull, so 10 foot six wide, draft of just over two feet. The same with the, um, with the CAD 300 engine option that she's got, she'll run about 40 knots flat out. Cruising very nicely at sort of 30, 30, 32 knots. We're burning around 60 liters an hour at that. So covering distance very well. Let's head up on board and, and take a look around. Uh, so we've got a teak laid bathing platform here on the back, uh, which was replaced in 2018. Other than the sanding, it's actually the, the planks are all pretty good. Handy bathing ladder here on the, on the aft deck. And again, typical with age-related marks on boats like this, you see little cracks appearing in some of the gel around the, uh, the hard shine areas, but not much really to do with those. And let's head up forward, take a look on the deck first. So we've got decks up both sides, easy access to the foredeck. Uh, there was an option on these for a set of bow sunbathing cushions. This boat doesn't have them, but you can uh, retrofit if you wanted to, a pair of sunbathers in the middle there, which would sit in between the deck hatches. You can see we really a racy look with these low um, 
pulpit rails, not the most practical when you're walking around up here, but I have to say once it's in the water, it's worth it for the looks. A big anchor locker up here forward, handy to put fenders and what have you, so we've got a Lofren's electric winch, plenty of galvanised chain and a nice good sized delta anchor up forward there. With foot switches here on the bow, and then again up on the uh, on the dash control if you're running shorthanded. It's a great looking boat, so sleek. Really, sun seekers of this pedigree. We're very all about performance, great looks, good sea keeping. Uh, covers were replaced 2018, so it's had a uh, new bimini top here and the side canvas windows and what have you. It all looks pretty serviceable for now. Uh, no radar on the boat, but we've got the option on the top here if you ever wanted to retrofit more nav kit. Fairly straightforward process to, to add a Ray Marine or Garmin package, Simrad pack to suit. Uh, worth noting on the platform here, so the owner had had a pair of these um, early davits purchased and so they fit on these two brackets on the back and allow you to fit a small tender sort of up to about a 75 kilo sat on the platform here and he's actually got a small aluminium dinghy and a electric outboard which would go with the boat depending on the offer level. So let's head on inside. Yeah, you'll see immediately so the access is on the port side into the cockpit and we've got a nice teak laid gank plank here that takes us over the engine hatch and down into the cockpit. So if we start on the port side, so we've got a wet bar arrangement here with a lift up lid that has the little sink with hot and cold running water. We've got a handy storage locker there. Upholstery again, classic Sunseeker blue over white. It's functional as it is. Uh, there's a few marks starting to show its age now. It looks pretty original. You can see some marking on the uh, on the top of the cushions here and sort of mildew that once really this gets into the cushions it's quite hard to to remove. So you either learn to live with it or we could re-upholster the boat either in the classic colours like this or you could do something very modern with the new Silvertex upholsteries and what have you. So we've got this big aft sun pad you imagine without the covers on. It's a great place for a, for a few people to lie out either underway or stationary. Uh, the backrest here so this picks up and drops down to give you an extended sun pad in the back here. It's occasional um, overnight berth as well. If you're happy to sleep under canvas, then um, you've got an additional double bed out here in the cockpit. You can see we've got low level lights. They've been swapped for LED bulbs in those. Uh, and a clever feature on the Super Hawk. So built into the starboard side here in the U-shaped seating, we've actually got a table hidden under this. So if I just remove the cushion, I'll show you how this works. Very straightforward to get out. And there you have a good sized dining table. So we've got room then with a large U-shaped seat. Uh, there's room actually where I'm stood to add another couple of director's chairs if you needed to. So plenty of space for dining. Um, often see owners at this age to take the, the plastic top off and change this for a nice piece of teak. Looks very nice just with a hinge section in the middle here to allow it to fold back up again. So handy just doubles up as a coffee table and there's still plenty of room here for walking around if you want to leave that set up all the time. Uh, pretty much an original factory stereo I would say, so we've got Sony speakers up here on the arch and there's a, a head unit downstairs for the AV. Again lights up in the arch, they look like they've been changed for LED light bulbs. Um, just explaining the covers, so we've got side windows here, a windscreen panel and then a separate bimini. So we can take out this section and we can just have the bimini for sun protection whilst we're at the helm. And again if I spin around and look aft, this is the bimini here. And then we can take out this side window, the rear curtain, and again that side to give us a nice open feeling. So we can get some protection, still uh, allowing the boat to run with covers up. We can enclose the full boat like we are now. We'll take the whole lot off if you really want to uh, to worship the sun and the whole boat's then open just with this real sleek uh, raked forward wind, uh, radar arch above us. I say which would take uh, nav kit if needed. So helm is on the starboard side and we've got this pair of uh, stand-up seats with uh, drop-out bolsters so these lower cushions here will drop down behind where your um, your calves would sit and that then gives you um, a stand-up bolster if you're driving the boat in rough weather and you don't want to sit down and coming across here so we've got Volvo's they were EVC controls back when they launched these so fly-by-wire so one finger in and out of gear very straightforward for driving little control panel 
for the engines, uh, drive trims, trim tabs. It's a real driver focused boat this, so everything's falling really nicely to hand. If I stand at the helm here, you can see either through the screen, you have to duck down to do that. If you imagine without the covers on, you're straight wind in the hair here. It's a real um, experience to drive something like this. Very forgiving, so it doesn't take a lot of um, skill to get the boat up and running. And if we just turn the ignitions on, to check the hours, so we're reading uh, 588 on the port and 587 on the starboard, so very much almost balancing out. Uh, pretty typical hours for something of this age. So we've got an array of Volvo gauges which give us our things like um, drive trims, voltage, temperatures, and pressures, and what have you. And then uh, the switches look like they've been replaced at some stage in the past. A nice bank of carling switches um, controlling things like horn, wipers, pumps, lighting, etc. And then down here we've got a Simrad uh, VHF radio, uh, which would have been factory original. And then we've got what would have been added at some stage of Garmin GPS Map 520, which is a basic chart plotter. You've got the option to put a little card in here for extra cartography. And it's just giving a basic idea of where the boat is and depth and what have you. Uh, it's of course possible to retrofit new kit into this if you wanted to. You see the dash panels are showing their age a little bit here. Very classic burr walnut, typical with the sun damage over the years. That this starts to fade a little bit so we can either do new burr dash uh, panels in walnut or we can do these in a modern carbon fiber finish if you uh, if you want something to to just bring the boat up to date little cracks in the uh, this is a painted finish across the dash it's pretty typical of sun seekers of this age again just generally learn to live with it it's not uh, it's not displeasing to the eye really everybody on board is having so much fun they don't notice things like that uh, but I just point it out on the basis that you may be travelling some distance to see the boat or possibly even buying blind. Uh, we've got a bow thruster control, so docking wise with the drives and the thruster, very easy to put the boat really wherever you wish. And then we'll just have a look through the floor. We've got a full teak cockpit here, which is all in good shape actually, um, other than a clean to bring it back to a uniform colour. This is all pretty good, doesn't need a sand, just a, a chemical treatment will bring this back up really nicely just tuck the table away and we'll lift up the engine hatch I like to do these things with a video running rather than cutting the camera it just gives you an idea of truly how long these things take to do rather than looking overly slick in typical sales fashion all right so we just pop the hatch up So it's a bit noisy, I'm afraid they all do the same. It's a big um, hydraulic ram sat in the middle there. So if we just tuck our heads in aft here, you'll see a pair of twin 280 horsepower. Uh, they're turbo and supercharged CAD 300 engines. Uh, they're seawater cooled into a heat exchanger and then the fresh water cooling through the engine itself. Uh, typical Sunseeker Hawk finish in here. So we've got the red flow coat finish on the uh, interior surfaces it just gives a little racy feel to the boat and um, over on the port side of the boat so these are the battery boxes the chargers galvanic isolators and what have you up on the on the bulkhead there um, there's a transom shower in the bag at the back there bilge blower midships and then down down here this is a hot water tank over on the starboard of the boat and then the um, the fuel tank here is sat in the uh, in the middle of the boat for um, optimal work weight balance. I'm saying she's running sort of 60, 65 liters an hour at cruise, um, up to around 110 liters an hour flat out with these engines, say getting on for around 40 knots. So quick boat, uh, nice little handy storage area here, forward of the engines. The hatch does come actually right up. So there's plenty of room to get in there for um, maintenance and, and checks and what have you. But I have to say the CAD 300 is a pretty good engine. and um, We fitted lots of them into to many different models over the years. Volvo's most powerful engine at the time on those stern drives. So head on forward, let's go take a look inside the cabin. Uh, so immediately you'll see we've got teak steps as we come down into the cabin. And just sit here so you can kind of appreciate the space. So we've got a boat, predominantly is a day boat that you could weekend on. So we've got this nice big sort of U-shaped seating area that immediately greets you at the bottom of the stairs. 
uh, and there's a table that sits in here which is currently up on the bed we'll have a look at that in a sec and the table obviously drops down into this area with a couple of cushions which will give you a, then a second double bed if needed so if you had a family with a couple of kids uh, great then to, to squeeze four of you on board and make a weekend of it away you've got full facilities on the boat and um, carpet wise so this all looks pretty good and uh, we've got a couple of marks on the on the floor down here which may clean out but it's not massively expensive to change all of this if you want to start afresh so the teak's all pretty good here and i have to say the wood for a boat of this age considering she's been down in the med the wood is pretty good down here it's classic high gloss cherry uh, these are all solid wood on the uh, on the cappings around the top rails here and then the doors done in a veneer so these often what we call bloom over time and the uh, the lacquer blows on the doors very hard to fix it so if you can find a boat all up together to begin with definitely worth consideration i say and i have to say this is pretty good uh, classic again sunseeker colors so we've got cream upholstery here on the sofas which other than a good clean actually i have to say for the year is pretty good nothing really to do down here other than those carpets i'd be leaving this all well alone and just enjoying the boat for what she is uh, so yes this is the table I'll just lift it up so you can see underneath looks pretty good under there so i can't see any nasty big scratches in it a couple of little chips on the edge which are fairly standard by this age uh, handy storage on some shelves either side of the bed here these are the good uh, big cushions that sit down in that central saloon to make the double um, and the boat comes with everything you see on board in the video so we've got things like life jackets some safety equipment um, say so this is the torpedo um, high spec electric outboard uh, which will go with that tender as well so that's all I say at the current asking price of 105,000 all of that would be included uh, these are storage lockers both sides of the saloon so we've got nice little handy storage cupboards plenty of space for bits and pieces and if we come back to the galley which is just on the do door as you come in on the port we've got a fridge with a little ice compartment in top there and then rare, rare to see on a boat this age so we've got the original Sunseeker cutlery in here so all the um, knives and forks and what have you and then tucked under the step here really nice to see we've got a full set of Royal Dalton original Sunseeker crockery in here so we've got a uh, selection of saucers and plates uh, we've got the original tea set with the, the teapot milk jug and what have you and even the, the soup bowls and the cups so it's rare by the time boats have been through a few owners say as a 2004 model that sort of stuff's generally been taken away by owners as they move from one boat to the next really rare to see a nice feature again top here is in pretty good shape and this slides open uh, to give us our tap so that lifts up and we've got hot and cold running water here through the chlorophyll which will also uh, make hot water from the engines little single burner electric top uh, it's mains power so you need to be on your shore power for that um, although there is the option to retrofit and uh, a small generator or you could even go as far as an inverter with some extra batteries and that would give you enough for a cup of tea and up top here it's been taken out by a previous owner but there was space in here for a small microwave so that's not difficult to retrofit one if you wanted the ability to do a little bit more in the way of cooking whilst you're on board so headroom's not bad i'm just under six feet and i can stand up just as i come through the door obviously with that sloping bow it does get a little bit tighter down in the bed area but still plenty of room to climb up and you can see there's a, there's a hatch up there for natural light and we've got a couple of little port lights up in the roof here which open to let ventilation in you see a head unit up here we've got a, an aux plug-in for a usb or a, a jack for, a, for an iphone space here for a little flat screen uh, tv would sit in here if you so wish and there would be, um, as an option in here, you would have had a little Glomex uh, TV booster. So we could add stuff like that if you really wanted to make the boat creature comforts for staying on board any length of time. Uh, so we've got a mains and battery domestic uh, control panel here for all the various systems on the boat. It's all nicely labelled, easy to see how the boat's set up when you first come on board and then leaving at the end of a weekend. And then in this heads compartment, you see it's actually quite a usable little space so we've got a um electric jabsco toilet here so a little bit of storage underneath the the worktop good size sink with uh this handset pulls out and then you've got a shower curtain just here which would come round and it gives you the basic facilities to allow you say to stay on board for a weekend 
bit more storage up there behind the mirrored panels. So all in all, say it's a very, um, very usable weekender. Some owners very happy to go off venturing for a couple of weeks across the south coast or down in the down in the Mediterranean. So it's a real classic boat, the Superhawk 40. Uh, hold their price really well. Have been worth pretty much the same sort of money for the last few years. Haven't changed at all. Um, in terms of preparation for um, completing a deal, really, we would suggest anybody purchasing a boat from us secondhand would be. Uh, looking to have a survey done, check the integrity of the boat is all as they expect and that can all be done in a matter of days now so very easy to turn this into uh, a usable boat on the water, take advantage of the, the summer season here in the UK or they're small enough to stick straight on the lorry and set uh, south so off to the um, let's say the Balearics or, or mainland Spain, France what have you, really very easy to do. Just going to drop the hatch back down and we'll go off and have a, a final look around the outside. So mooring here on the south coast for this, uh, say on the Hamble or down here in Poole, we'd be looking around £7,000 a year for an annual contract. Uh, gives you freedom nights away in some of the other marinas in there, in those sort of corporations. Uh, portfolios, alternatively down in the south of France, uh, potentially even to dry stack something this size. So really depends where you're looking to use it as to what the, um, what the end cost will be, but typically it's a very cost effective way to get on the water so they hold the money very well by this age really they've done the bulk of their depreciation very little you'd be unlikely or unfortunate to have any big uh, you know unexpected costs on something like this so I say if you'd like to find out any more information my name is James from Sunseeker Southampton mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven or it's james.lumley at sunseekersouthampton.com send you a full portfolio of photos, full specs, uh, talk you through title documents etc uh, on this yacht or if there's anything else in the range you think might be more suited uh, please get in touch.